We're here because we believe that the system is failing. I'm here because of a growing sense of injustice. I suffered some injustice. Jobs. My dad phoned me up two weeks ago and said, you know, I'm a little bit concerned about your future. And, you know, he's never said anything like that to me before. Why are we suffering from this crisis? It just shows you that the government system is very corrupt. You're only going to live in one house. Hospital privatisation and increasing student fees and public sector job cuts. Like we are rebelling against that. So I have been there. It's not what you're saying it is. You see something wrong going on. You, you, you have to stand up to it. You know, one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. We need to understand what we are before we question what we want to do. What I'm trying to say is this. For all my life, I've been needing something. I've been feeling like we've been seeing nothing but the evil side. Of humanity out there Hear them call a generation Many roads of dedication Stepping stones to better days for should be debating why are we here what we're trying, what we're trying to make sure that we spread the word throughout the, the masses that are here is that like, there is there should be absolutely zero violence from from this crowd because we are here to peacefully demonstrate with using our human basic human rights the moment we turn nasty then we have no justification as well but uh, the whole point is everything we've ever seen with regard to the peaceful protest the uh, antagonism, the, the uh, provocation and the violence has always come from the establishment and the authorities. If we, if we show that we are non-violent in every way, uh, they really should leave us alone. Violence only begets violence. If we, if we, even if we have to just sit down and be dragged away without, uh, without fighting back, that's fair enough. But we should be um, allowed uh, um, and permitted to occupy this part of London to show our disgust with the government, the corporates, the fat cat bankers and the elite. They're the ones getting fatter and fatter while we're counting out how many beans we can put on our kids' plate and seats so they all get a fair share. This is, no, this is not going to change until the government sits up and takes notice. All over the world is so disappointed and so discontented with the government and the fat cat bankers and the, the censorship and the media. I mean, it is really too too much. But we're taking back our freedom. Is there going to be a time when the uh, members of Anonymous are going to be able to go to a rally without their masks? Oh, I'd take my mask off. Yeah, we took our mask off. It's, it's an it's idea. It's not under it's, it's an idea. Yeah. I've been wearing mine all day. But yeah. it's, it's an idea, and then and that's, it symbolises the idea. And at the same time, we can recognise each other. Yeah? So, in this crowd, there's loads of anons, there's even more in the crowd. It and you know. In mainstream politics, we don't have an effective voice for position. We don't have inspiring thinkers. We don't have inspiring leaders. The erosion of all our freedoms, freedom of expression, freedom of speech, freedom of symbol. We need to just wake up. We need to stand up all together. We need to raise our hands and say, enough is enough. Public institutions are things that unite all, whether rich or poor. The demands are very similar, the sort of aspirations are very similar. To be informed about what's really going on in different political voices. There's no single voice, there's no single leader. We're learning from each other. Stand up for one another. And we keep on questioning. Having something cohesive, which we might call community. Something sustainable and ongoing. It makes like humanity is waking up and uniting. Society makes you feel as though you are accepted. It's a beautiful feeling. Hear them call a generation Many roads of dedication Stepping stones to better days for
voters. Even if we're a, a little candlelight within the darkness, that's what we are. And that light is going to grow. If there's enough of us, then we can succeed. Be involved. Make your stand. Unite us people. The corrupt fear us, the honest support us, and the brave join us. Hi, my name's Malcolm Blackman. I'm from London. I'm 44 years old. I'm a security consultant. I'm here to protest against uh, the, the greed of the banks and the corporations. Um, I've been here since day one, since Occupy, uh, Occupy the World Day, which was October the 15th. And uh, I don't intend to go anywhere until, I'm in, until I've been heard. I'm, I'm getting a little bit fed up with paying um, X amount of tax on everything that I do. And um, it's getting to the stage now where it's time to make, uh, make a stand and make sure that the people of the world know why this is happening. Uh, a normal day for me would be um, waking up around about 8 o'clock to the sound of the bells. Um, the church, obviously, it's uh, 7.30 mass, first thing in the morning. Um, we get up to that, maybe have a little clear up around the camp, make sure everything's tidy. Uh, then we seem to spend an awful lot of time doing press calls and photo calls, um, as obviously the anonymous mask is, is the face of um, Occupy London. So um, our day generally starts with a cup of tea, uh, a few press calls, a few interviews, a bit of tidying up and then maybe off for breakfast at 11. I've got some very good chefs here. There's uh, a couple of Italian chefs that uh, work tirelessly in the kitchen. Uh, they do that all voluntarily, the same as everyone here. Everyone volunteers their services for nothing. Um, the food's all ve vegetarian, um, which is it's, it's starting to grow on me, but I must admit I am missing my beef burgers. Right, well, I'm not, I'm not wise enough to have all the answers or the solutions, but at least I've got the will to look for them and with the right people around us, with the right theologists and, and, and the right philosophers, we could probably find a much better solution than we have at the moment. Capitalism isn't working, but I'm not an anti-capitalist. Um, you can't replace one without, uh, with the other. I suggest a tweak of the two, a mix and match, so maybe uh, some wealth capping, some reforms on the banks. Let's get some heads in a think tank here and, and get some solutions. Instead of, instead of spending all this time figuring out how to get rid of us, why not address the reasons why we're here? I, look, I would like to point out though that Anonymous UK is not on Corporation City land, it's on church land and we have a great working reputation with the uh, church at the moment. We have a good dialogue with the police, we have a good dialogue with the church. Uh, the church, as far as we're aware, the last we heard, the church's stance has not changed. It still supports the people's right to protest and will not, um, will not put its name to anything that will use force to evict the people from its premises. And that is something that we're very grateful for the Church of England for. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Hi, we're here at uh, Occupy London, which is the uh, movement here in the UK that's part of the international uh, Occupy movement. Good morning, my name's Malcolm. Um, I'm on the steps of St Paul's and I've been here since October the 15th. I'm from Somerset, I'm 44 and I'm a security guard. And what's your experience been so far? Oh, it's been great. There's been a great carnival atmosphere. The first day was fraught with um, tension between the police, the Metropolitan Police, and uh, the protesters, or the occupiers. But um, once we'd settled down for the night and we got the tents up and we weren't intimidated or provoked or pushed off of the site, and the cannon turned up the next day and told the police to go away, we've been pretty much left to our own devices since then. So it's all about raising awareness. first week there was a bit of an issue with uh, the church trying to um, keep quiet on the subject of does it support the people or is it um, uh, a lapdog to the corporate sponsors, so people like JP Morgan, Rothschild, uh, Goldman Sachs, the sponsors behind uh, the cathedral. Um, this led to at least one resignation, the canon himself, um, shortly followed by the dean after him and that sort of that gave pause for thought and we decided to ask the question who's putting the pressure on these people to resign. So um, we dug a bit deeper and we found that the sponsors were all the elite of the world and the trustees are all directors of banks, um, all except one who's an ex-chief of police for the Metropolitan Police, Sir Ian Blair, he's another trustee of St Paul's. So that, asked us, that led us to ask the question, is God for sale? 
Um, and if so, how much was he bought for by the corporations? Because maybe we, as the British public, can have a whip round and see if we can't sort of like raise the same sort of counter offer and maybe buy God ourselves. Um, when that was the question raised, obviously the church really did have to, to, to pull its finger out and make a decision. And luckily enough, it chose to come down on the side of the people, which to, was to practice what it preaches. Um, and that's every Sunday, compassion for your fellow man, love thy neighbour, season of goodwill coming up to all men, etc. But um, sadly, the corporations are still going to go ahead and evict us from St Paul's land without St Paul standing up for the people, and they're going to use uh, planning permission laws to do so. Uh, Corporation London, for your, uh, for your uh, viewers and listeners in, in Barcelona, uh, the Corporation of London is not London as a whole. London is a big, big city uh, with a mayor. The Corporation of London is a small part of that and uh, is only about one square mile. But on that one square mile it, it are the, the big banks, the big city firms, and it operates almost kind of as an autonomous state. It's more independent than Catalonia, it's more independent than the Basque country, it's, a, it's an autonomous state within London, and, and it governs itself, it has a representative in Parliament. Um, and there is no excuse for them trying to take out the tents on this ground, on St Paul's ground, before um, they've taken it up with St Paul's. Um, because we're really, we're on St Paul's ground, therefore it's St Paul's that is breaking planning permission. Uh, we believe the, the corporation shouldn't come in to, to take the tents. We believe the church should stand up and say, hang on a minute, Jesus and uh, others were born in tents and yurts. They're very much a part of biblical history. So why, why are we doing this? Again, we have to beg the question, what would Jesus do if he were here? All we've been shown is occupation. Only thing that's wrong is occupation. It's a wonder why we choose to occupy. And have you had any conversations with people from the city, people working here in the financial sector? Yeah, we get two types of people asking questions from the city. We get the daytime ones that genuinely want to know and genuinely want to help. Um, or they do want to voice their um, displeasure at our being here, um, but they do it in a civil manner. It's normally in their lunch hour, and in fact, the majority outweigh the, the minority with regard to the, the bankers that do come over and support our action. A lot of them aren't very happy in their jobs, but they obviously can't speak out. Um, but then you get the other former banker at two o'clock in the morning who's come out of a pub and um, really shows us the true spirit of bankers in a British banker because uh, you have a thoroughly British protest here with people being polite, pleasant, nice, no rudeness, no bad manners, no drugs, no alcohol uh, and then you get the bankers coming home from the clubs at two o'clock in the morning who would really like to discuss our being here um, whilst under the influence of alcohol. They tend to be escorted off the site by the police screaming and shouting um, with the police shaking their heads in uh, disappointment and anguish at uh, our, our thoroughly British bankers behaving like oiks and yobs whilst the protesters who are supposed to be cr scruffy hippies are behaving like perfect ladies and gentlemen. And what do the police do when this happens? Well, the police, the police are very much in favour of us. They've said all along that we are probably one of the most peaceful protests they've ever come across and um, they've, it's been a pleasure to work with us so far. But, you know, they know that, that that time might change. But this, there is very much a, poli uh, uh, a community policing feel here. The policing numbers has died off gradually until you're now just a couple of bobbies on the beat. We do have officers stationed permanently in London Stock Exchange should anything really go mental. And we obviously believe that they're there for the, the, the moment that uh, they're given the order to move us. One world wants up, one occupation. They wage war, they want occupation. They